Welcome to another episode of Top Stocks. In this video, I'm going over my top seven stocks for the month of April, 2022. I've personally researched hundreds of different companies and this is my list of stocks I think are solid buys right now. I encourage you to watch all the way through to get my full analysis on each of these companies. I'll go over key numbers, recent news, and why I expect them to grow. Thanks to Mumu for making this video possible. Let's get started. So the first stock we're talking about today is Apple stock ticker AAPL. Apple is an American tech company based in Cupertino that is known for its development of smartphones, tablets, computers, and advanced operating systems. So right now, one share of Apple is trading at $174.72 with a 52-week low of $118.86 and a 52-week high of $182.94. If we take a look at the one-year price chart, you can see that Apple has grown tremendously within the last year. And last April, they were at around $120 a share. And yeah, we've seen this really consistent growth with a few small corrections all the way to highs of about $180, followed by a pretty recent correction as well as a, a very recent recovery. They have a market cap of $2.851 trillion, a P ratio of 29.05, earnings per share of $6.01, and they pay a mild dividend of 0.51%. So looking at the valuation measures, we can see that they have a five-year expected peg ratio of 3.31 and a price to book ratio of 38.62. They have very healthy profit margins with a current profit margin of 26.58% and also a spectacular return on equity of 145.57%. This is on revenues in the last 12 months of about $378.32 billion. Looking at their balance sheet, we can see that they have total cash of $63.91 billion and they have a solid current ratio of 1.04. Their payout ratio based on the current dividend is just 14.34%, meaning a majority of their profits are going back to growing the company. It's always interesting to see what analysts have to say. So on a scale of one to five, one being a strong buy and five being a sell, analysts are rating Apple as a 1.8, meaning it is a buy. And the average analyst price target is $193.53, which is about 10% higher than the current price of $174.72. So in addition to its everlasting impact on the global tech space, Apple is still making groundbreaking and innovative strides with its business. Recently, the company acquired the UK financial health startup company called Credit Kudos. By allowing businesses to examine the banking data of its loan applicants, the startup offers services for lenders to assess the credit worthiness of potential borrowers. And this acquisition is just another instance of Apple making a push into the market of digital payment technology, which is a venture that it's been pursuing for a few years. A notable example of this push is when Apple launched the Apple credit card in the US in 2019. Now, Apple's products are also selling at a hotter rate than ever. An analyst from investment firm Wedbush said that the demand for Apple's iPhone 13 was robust and that the iPhone 13 sales were strong in both the US and China, which are two of the biggest markets in the world. In fact, Apple's business has been so successful in China that its market share in the country extended to a staggering 23% a few months ago. Given the company's already solid reputation as the richest company in the world, durability is far from a problem for Apple. And considering recent news in the headlines, Apple is still making big strides with its business. So innovation is nothing to worry about when it comes to the iPhone developer. It's worth remembering that Apple will be announcing earnings at the end of the month on April 27th. So this is a great opportunity for investors to hear more about how Apple is doing financially. I personally believe that it's very hard to go wrong with investing in AAPL for the long term. And I'm going to be adding more to my portfolio. All right, the second stock we're talking about is Southwest stock ticker LUV. Southwest is one of the largest airline companies in the US and the world's largest low cost carrier headquartered in Dallas. Right now, one share of Southwest is trading at $44.38 with a 52 week low of $36.75 and a 52 week high of $64.75. So yeah, we're definitely down from those 52 week highs. If we take a look at the one year price chart, you can see that one year ago we were trading, you know, over $60 a share and we saw a pretty steady decline in price all the way to where it is right now. We have a market cap of $26.288 billion, a P ratio of 27.57, and earnings per share of $1.61. Yahoo Finance has them rated as undervalued, which is always a good sign to see. Now, looking at the valuation measures, we can see that we are expecting a lot of growth with a five-year expected peg ratio of 1.57 and a price to book ratio of 2.44. The profit margin stands at 6.19% and they have a decent return equity of 10.13%. This is all in revenues of 15 $15.79 billion in the last 12 months. They have total cash of $15.5 billion and they have a current ratio of 1.97, which is pretty strong. Analysts are rating Southwest as a 2.2, meaning it is a buy. And the average analyst price target is $53.40, which is about 20% higher than the current price of $44.38. Okay, so Southwest Airlines has a unique business model that allows it to be the world's largest low cost carrier. To start off, the company uses a rolling hub model, which controls airline traffic and decreases 
increases cost of operation. If you guys take a look at this graphic for an American Airlines airport in Dallas, you can see the glaring difference in flights per 15 minutes between 2001 before American Airlines changed to a rolling hub structure and 2003 when they actually implemented that change. So flights are way more spread out and evenly distributed, reducing congestion and costs. Now, the only downside is that passengers have to wait a little longer to connect to a flight, but again, they get to save money along the way and the airport experience is far less chaotic. Southwest also uses a point to point network where planes go directly to destination and there are no central hubs or middle stops. This network has several advantages, including eliminating the need for flight connections, significantly reducing travel time and reducing the risk of baggage loss or late arrival of baggage. Concerning the distinctive business model and the niche it provides for Southwest Airlines as the world's largest low cost carrier, I'd say that there are plenty of reasons to believe in the airline's durability. And recently, Southwest Airlines announced the launch of a new ticket type to boost revenue. This new ticket type will be the second cheapest fare offered by the airline, making it an affordable option for passengers. One option is the ability to cancel flights and to give that flight credit to any member of Southwest's frequent flyer program, whether it be a friend, family, coworker, or whatever. And another option is to actually change flights on the same day without any price increases. These new changes make me bullish about the company because Southwest Airlines is clearly making a greater effort to refine its business in a unique and creative way. And the airline company will be announcing its earnings at the end of the month on April 28th, so be sure to be on the lookout for that. Overall, it's a really solid company that I think is trading under value. And yeah, definitely one to keep on your watch list. If all right, so next up, we are talking about Tesla stock ticker TSLA. Tesla is one of the largest and most influential EV and clean energy companies in the world. So right now, one share of Tesla is trading at $1,010.64 with a 52-week low of $546.98 and a 52-week high of $1,243.49. Here's the one-year price chart. You can see that one year ago, you know, we were at trading around $600, $700 a share. We saw some pretty gradual increases in price all the way up to October of 2021, followed by a major spike in price all the way to over $1,200 a share. Since then, it's sort of uh, trended downwards, but we have seen a pretty big uh, increase in price in the last one month. They have a market cap of $1.045 trillion, an ultra high PE ratio of 206.21, meaning based on paper, this company is definitely overvalued, and an earnings per share of $4.90. We have a five-year expected peg ratio of 2.95 and a price to book ratio of 34.2. The profit margin sits at 10.25%, which is pretty solid, and they have a return on equity equity of 20.43%. This is all in revenues of $53.82 billion in the last 12 months. Now looking at their balance sheet, we can see that they have total cash of $17.71 billion and they have a good current ratio of 1.38. Analysts are a little bit mixed about Tesla. They are rated as a 2.5, meaning it is between a buy and a hold. And the average analyst price target is $949.22, which is about 6% lower than the current price of $1,010.64. Okay, so Tesla has already cemented itself as one of the most disruptive and talked about companies of the century, with its stock experiencing some pretty ridiculous price movement in its history. And they're still impressing the market with their gigantic strides in its progress. With the biggest announcement being that just a few days ago, Tesla launched Tesla Gigafactory Berlin. This means that Tesla now has manufacturing plants on three continents. And the opening of Giga Berlin couldn't have been timelier as demand for EVs has been on a sharp incline in Western Europe. It's also safe to say that EVs will benefit from the current political climate, which has led to an uncomfortable increase increase in gasoline prices. Naturally, this has led to skyrocketing demand for EVs, which also can have happened in a timelier manner, because as you guys know, the world is facing a short supply of electric vehicles and, you know, all vehicles in general. These current circumstances should yield incredible demand and value for products that Tesla can develop and provide for the market as a whole. Now, in terms of market adoption, it's only becoming clearer by the day that EVs are no longer just dreams of the future. They're absolutely becoming the present. And recently, Hertz announced that it was essentially going all in on Tesla by pushing forward on adopting more EV options by the auto manufacturer. More specifically, Hertz has added Tesla's Model Y crossover to its EV offerings. Before, the only Tesla EV offering was the Tesla Model 3. And yeah, in terms of car prices, Tesla also recently increased the prices of, I think, all of their cars pretty significantly. While it's not good for the consumer, it definitely should be good for profits. Tesla will be reporting earnings on April 25th, so be sure to be on the lookout for that. I really feel that Tesla, especially under 
under the leadership of Elon Musk will continue to excite and disrupt the global market for years and years to come. So yeah, hopefully that continues to build up hype for Tesla stock and continues to push the price up. All right, the next stock we're talking about is Equifax, stock ticker EFX. Equifax is one of the largest American consumer credit reporting agencies and offers other services such as selling credit monitoring and fraud prevention services to consumers. Right now, one share of Equifax is trading at $235.46 with a 52-week low of $177.91 and a 52-week high of $300.11. So yeah, we are just in the middle of that 52-week range. Look at the one-year price chart. You can see that one year ago, we were sitting at just about $175, $180 a share. Saw a huge increase in the price all the way up to the end of 2021, followed by a pretty significant correction, as well as a small recent recovery. Equifax has a market cap of $28.746 billion, a P ratio of 39.11, earnings per share of $6.02, and they pay a mild dividend of 0.66%. Yahoo Finance is marking them as near fair value. Now looking at the valuation measures, we have a five-year peg ratio of 1.47 and a price to book ratio of 8.06. Their profit margin is 15.11%. They have a return equity of 21.98%. And yeah, this is all in revenues of $4.92 billion in the last 12 months. Looking at their balance sheet, we can see that they have total cash of $224.7 million and they have a current ratio of 0.49, which means that their current liabilities are actually quite high compared to their current assets. Analysts are rating Equifax as a 1.9, meaning it is a buy. And the average analyst price target is $286.33, which is about 20% higher than the current price of $235.46. In the past month, Equifax has announced many partnerships and acquisitions, which should be a pretty bullish sign for investors as it shows that Equifax has enough capital to reinvest in its own expansion and form a large network of partnerships with other companies. For starters, the company acquired Data Credito, the largest consumer credit reporting agency in the Dominican Republic. This acquisition demonstrates that Equifax is expanding its influence and business into Latin America. Equifax also partnered with Team Velocity to offer their qualified customer offerings for their new auto dealership uh, subscription service, which basically is showcasing Equifax's efforts to branch into credit reporting for auto-related businesses. They also partnered with Autonomy for an EV subscription service. So yeah, they've really hammered home their entry into the auto industry. And Equifax and Bridgeforce Data Solutions have both committed to data accuracy through their new partnership. More specifically, Equifax will create Bridgeforce's data quality scanner, and both will collaborate to build elaborate, comprehensive, and trustworthy databases for businesses and consumers. Recently, Equifax, along with Experian and TransUnion, announced that they would eliminate unexpected medical debts from consumer credit reports, which would majorly benefit U.S. consumers and their credit worthiness. This news has especially boosted my faith in Equifax's adherence to its mission, and that is to ultimately solve consumer challenges. They will be reporting their earnings on April 20th, so be on the lookout for that. I think that there's a lot that I believe in when it comes to Equifax, and that's why at the very least, I will be keeping EFX on my watch list. So next up, we are talking about the SPDR, S&P 500 ETF Trust stock ticker SPY. SPY, as they like to call it, is an exchange traded fund that tracks the S&P 500 stock market index and is the largest ETF in the world. So right now, one share of SPY is trading at $452.69 with a 52-week low of $392.81 and a 52-week high of $479.98. You can see that in the last year, this stock has grown significantly. We did see a very big correction at the start of 2022, but we have seen a small recovery since then. They have net assets of $455.22 billion, so this is an absolutely gigantic fund. We have an average dividend yield of 1.3%, and the expense ratio is sitting at 0.09%. So it is categorized as a large blend fund. Unfortunately, the S&P 500 has seen a pretty big correction uh, since 2022. And we have a year-to-date daily total return of negative 12.26%. And if we look at these sector weightings, we can see that uh, it's pretty heavy in consumer cyclical, financial services, healthcare, communication services, industrials, and technology. We have an average price to earnings ratio of 26.45, average price to book ratio of 4.42. And the top 10 holdings, which make up 27.37% of total assets, include companies like Apple, Microsoft, and Amazon. So like I said, the performance of the S&P 500 has not been good since the beginning of 2022. But if we look at the one-year daily total return, it's still very good at 10.6%. And the three-year daily total return is 16.88%. So here's the annual total return history. You can see that most years it's performed extremely well, but we did have red years in 2018, 2008, and 2002. So SPY recently experienced what's known as a death cross in market pattern terminology. And basically a death cross is a market chart pattern that reflects reflects price weakness, and it specifically refers to a drop of a short-term moving average of the stock below a longer-term moving average of the stock. While this might sound like 
bearish news, death crosses usually aren't something to worry about. In fact, market research suggests that uh, a death cross tends to happen before a near-term rebound for the stock that usually results in higher than average returns. I like to think of this pattern as the low that is needed to generate a bit of momentum for the stock to shoot up. But of course, who knows? It's also important to remember that SPY reflects the behavior and action of stocks from 500 large companies listed on US stock exchanges. In other words, the ETF is a pretty solid reflection of the greater market as a whole. As a result, it's impacted by sweeping economic decisions, political climates, and more. So this month, the Federal Open Market Committee had a meeting to address strategies of fighting inflation. And most analysts could agree that their chosen approach was much less aggressive than expected and more of a, we'll see how this turns out given the current state of the world. For now, this should make consumers a little less worried as interest rates could have easily been bumped up, hindering the ability to consume and spend in the market. Now, considering other external factors, such as the pandemic or the war between Russia and Ukraine, a bunch of these things happening has softened the market as a whole, especially tech stocks, which as you guys saw is uh, pretty heavy in SPY. And yeah, this could mean that, you know, right now SPY is trading at a discount and overall in the long term, I think it's a pretty solid time to purchase uh, this ETF and just hold it long term. So yeah, SPY, VOO, any of these ETFs uh, is a really good pick uh, for most investors. Okay, next up, we're talking about Meta stock ticker FB. Meta is an American tech company based in Menlo Park that is largely known for its development of the social media platform, Facebook. So right now, one share of Meta is trading at $221.82 with a 52 week low of $185.82 and a 52 week high of $384.33. So obviously we are well, well under the uh, 52 week high. Look at the one year price chart. You can see that one year ago, we were you know gradually increasing increasing in price from about uh, $280 all the way up to over 380 bucks per share. We saw a small decline in price starting in September of 2021, all by a huge correction at the start of February in 2022. The current market cap is $603.781 billion. We have a P ratio of 16.11, which is absolutely very low for a company like Meta and earnings per share of $13.77. So yeah, Yahoo Finance is marking it as undervalued. We have a five-year expected peg ratio of 1.16 and a price to book ratio of 4.65. They have really great profitability with a profit margin of 33.38% and a very strong return equity of 31.1%. This is all in revenues of about $117.93 billion in the last 12 months. The balance sheet shows total cash of $48 billion and they have a very great current ratio of 3.15. Analysts always love Meta. They are rating it as a 2.1, meaning it is a buy. And the average analyst price target is $324.22, which is almost 50% higher than the current price of $221.82. So right now, if you look at all the numbers, I really do think that Meta is selling at a big discount. As you guys might have saw, Meta experienced a massive price drop at the end of January after it reported its first ever sequential decline in active users around two months ago. And now Meta sells for less than 15 times its estimated earnings, which is outrageous considering the durability of the company, the assets that it owns, for example, Instagram is still doing Doing phenomenally and the value that it can bring to the table, especially in regards to the development of the metaverse. And in spite of declining active users of Facebook, Meta's business is still clearly growing. It was recently announced that Meta invested $800 million into the opening of a data center in Kansas City. This data center is going to be huge as it will be located in the city's 5.5 million square foot data center campus called Golden Plains Technology Park. They're expected to support more than 1,300 jobs at peak construction and up to 100 operational jobs when it goes online in 2024. And it's going to be eco-friendly as it will run on 100% renewable energy, achieve net zero carbon emissions, and use 32% less energy and be 80% more water efficient than the typical industry standard. And we just heard that Meta is going to start running 3D ads on Facebook and Instagram. It's also awesome that Facebook ads are actually suddenly doing better for advertisers. The next big thing to anticipate for this company is its next earnings report, which is going to happen on April 27th. Hopefully this is going to be a chance for Meta to redeem itself. But yeah, we do have underperformance again, we will see the price of Meta probably go down more. Overall, I think there was a pretty big overreaction to the uh, decline in users. And personally, I feel that it's really hard to go wrong with uh, investing in companies like Meta because it's so durable. It's a leader in the space. And in the long term, uh, you know, Meta should do exceptionally well. Okay, so the last stock we were talking about is Lowe's stock ticker LOW. Lowe's is an American company based in North Carolina that specializes in selling home improvement products and services and is the second largest hardware chain in the country. One share of Lowe's is trading at $212.92 with a 52-week low of $182.08 and a 52-week high of 
$1,000, Looking at the one-year price chart, we can see that one year ago, we were trading at about $190, $200 a share. Stayed pretty consistently all the way up to October of 2021, where it shot up in price all the way to over $260 a share. And since then, we've seen about a 20% uh, correction in price. We have a market cap of $140.86 billion, a P ratio of 17.68, earnings per share of $12.04, and they pay a mild dividend of 1.46%. They have a five-year expected peg ratio of 1.38, and their current profit margin is 8.77%. They're sitting on total cash of about $1.47 billion, and they have a current ratio of 1.02. Their current payout ratio is a very safe 24.92%, and right now, analysts are rating lows as a 1.9, meaning it is a buy, and the average analyst price target is $278.38, which is over 25% higher than the current price of $212.92. Lowe's recently announced that it would sell $5 billion worth of notes. Now, for those of you that don't know, notes are basically IOUs that can help a company generate money to reinvest in itself. And when a company starts selling notes, that can either mean the company is struggling or the company has bullish outlooks and plans or both. In the case of Lowe's, one can definitely argue that it's struggling against its biggest competitor and the largest hardware chain in the world, which is the Home Depot. However, the company still generally experienced positive financial trends, experiencing a year-over-year -year growth in net earnings. And investors should also be happy to hear that Lowe's has declared a quarterly cash dividend of 80 cents per share, which is payable on May 4th to shareholders that buy uh, the stock by April 20th. It seems like business is doing better than expected for Lowe's, and with the company's most recent announcements, it sounds like there's still plenty of room to grow for the home improvement company. They're announcing their next earnings report on May 18th, which is still quite a long time from now, but it's always advantageous to observe a company's performance and a stock's behavior for a significant amount of time prior to the earnings release. With all the information we have on this company so far, and with the understanding that Lowe's still has a pretty rock solid place in its uh, industry, I think that Lowe's is definitely one to keep on your watch list. Anyways, those are my top seven stocks for the month of April, 2022. If you guys wanna get your free stocks from Moomoo, make sure to use that link in the description below. And yeah, with all investing, I want you guys to do your own due diligence. Uh, I'm not a financial advisor. This should not be considered financial advice. This is simply an overview and analysis of seven stocks that I currently like. So yeah, don't just watch this video and go out and buy uh, any of these stocks. Make sure you do at least one hour of your own due diligence before purchasing anything. Anyways, I hope you guys found this video helpful and if you did, make sure to hit that like button and also subscribe for more videos just like this. I make a ton of content about personal finance, investing, and entrepreneurship. And yeah, really my whole goal is to help you guys become millionaires by the age of 30. Thank you so much for your time and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.